Are you gonna listen to the move? I've been out the loop since 09. Yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back to get at that, though. Check this. I'm at the motherfucking house last night. Guess what the fuck I see? What you see? Shamika, what's up? Fuck you think you fucking with? It's Maxwell, bitch! Fuck you in them shoes. Bitch, I'm about to stomp you with these shoes. I thought I told you to get a jump to Crazy D. I did, I did give it to Crazy D. You know D, you must have seen money in that. You know he used to produce those newly DVDs. Fuck you, thin man. I know you did it. Don't let your mouth write a check, because I will take it out on your ass. Damn, man. Is you serious? I don't appreciate it being roughed up by men. Or should I say, male bitches. Yeah, it's gonna work out. And we look for young ladies like you to host them. I look, I look like somebody that can host your videos. That's right. So go change, cause we ain't got all day. What the hell? How you get my room? Film Review, Movies, Music, Culture, Politics, Society Podcast, Interviews, Movie Reviews, and more. Live Sundays at 5.30 p.m. on the Film Review Live channel. Subscribe. Hi, this is Bernadette Stannis, Delma from Good Times, and you're watching the Film Review. What's going on, people? How you feeling? This is another great episode of the Film Review. Movies, Music, Culture, Politics, Society Podcast. Hashtag TFR Podcast Live. We are your hosts. I'm Crazy D. I'm Tracy. And we review movies, music, yep. culture, politics, society on this podcast. And don't forget, this podcast is brought to you by yep. Back in Cleveland Movie. It is one of the most hilarious, one of the most drama-filled yep. films straight from out of Cleveland, Ohio, produced yep. by yours truly, written by yours truly, edited by yours truly, narrated yep. by yours truly, starred in by yours truly, featuring... Yep top hip-hop artists yep. and talent from yep. CLE and now we're in the CLV right so yep. make sure that you order this today at Lord Land Films that's yep. Lord Land Films you go there you can stream it for $2.99 on demand yep. that's right Crazy D's been on demand for a while but he uh, on demand yeah. also or you can order the hard copy and we can get it out there to you can have it in your collection either way yeah. lordlandfilms.com yep. boy do we have a jam-packed show for you today yeah. right mm -hmm. so it's no need okay. to do anything okay. but to say but to ask you 
But how was your how week? was your week? And let me put up the uh, the symbol first, and then we can okay. get started. Let me put the symbol up. How was your week? Blurbs of the week, all okay. that, and here we go. So, how was your week? You know, I realized that 2020, not even just 2020, but August alone, there has been so much going on this month. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're in September now, but it was so much going on in August. Right. That we forgot to say happy birthday to hip hop. We sure we did. We missed it. We missed August it. August 11th. Un- Believable. How could we have missed yeah. August 11th? We had it last year. You yeah. can go check out our show yeah. from last year. We had a celebration. We, we had a celebration. It's your birthday, yeah. hip hop. That's what we said. So, so today is happy belated birthday. Happy belated birthday. And you know, I was thinking, you know how on um, when people celebrate their birthdays, you hear the uh, the happy birthday to you song mm-hmm. or the Stevie Wonder happy birthday to you. Mm-hmm. And so when I think of hip hop, right, on hip hop's birthday, just Mm -hmm. like last year, and I believe like the year before that and the year before that, there's only one song for me. What's that? That pops in my head when it's time to celebrate hip hop's birthday. What's that? It's Dead Prez Hip Hop. That song just. It's bigger than hip hop. Hip hop. That's hip hop's birthday song. Hip hop. It's bigger yeah. than dan, dan, dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel it, that. But, but yeah, you know, copyright. So you got the best rendition from yours <laughs> truly, crazy. So definitely, Dead, dead Prez yeah, hip hop song is the happy birthday it song. It's the happy hip-hop. birthday song. Yes, it is. Yes. Let me bring this down a little bit. Let's get started yeah. with the blurbs of the week, right? Let's get started, all right? Oh, people, did you forget? Yeah. That we are simulcasting, right? We are simulcasting, and we, we have to say this before we go any further. Okay. We are simulcasting on Periscope, right? Right. We are simulcasting on Vimeo. We're simulcasting on FB, yep. on the Film Review, Movies, Music, Culture, Politics, Society page make sure right. that you follow it like it right. and we're also on youtube right streaming live on youtube right now right. you know what i mean uh making it happen let me block this the practice so make you can watch us on those four formats right yeah. we're gonna move out of being on instagram other than some clips of the replays because right. you know we do the full t- two hours right on Periscope, Vimeo, mm-hmm. Facebook, and on the YouTube, YouTube channel, the Film Review Life channel. The right. Film Review Life channel. Make yes. sure you subscribe yeah. right now. Subscribe right now. And you can watch us right there on the Film Review Life channel. Yeah. It's episode 129. Yeah. We're reviewing 808 Documentary and the yeah. Yousef Hawkins yeah. Storm over Brooklyn documentary, you know right? What? And we're going to be talking about that today. That 808 documentary. Well, that's mm-hmm. perfect for hip hop's yeah. birthday. It, it right? is. That's it like is. A, a belated birthday gift. Belated birthday gift <laughs> because, you know, we were, yeah. we we missed it, but yeah. we're still in the thing because we do hip hop around here. Everything that we do is hip hop around these parts, right? So we like that. Thank everyone who's coming in. So let's yes. get to the blurbs of the week as I do some population here. Okay. So let's start with this one right here. Okay. Because I thought that this was pretty hilarious as I bring that down right there. I thought that was this was pretty hilarious. So we're going to start with okay. this right here. All right. So... As you know, as I search the thing. Oh no, we don't start with a hilarious one. We start with a deep one first. Oh, you're gonna start with a deep one. We start with a deep one first. Okay, Okay. here we go, people. This sets up our whole theme for tonight. Okay. You cannot force someone to comprehend a message that they are not ready to receive. That's a good one. Right? That's a good one. Still, you must never 
underestimate the power of planting a seed. And that is right, people. You know, many times I say I have to you have to repeat to people three times what you're saying. They say you have to repeat something three times of what you're saying. Right. They say you have to repeat three times of what you're saying for right. people to understand it. But sometimes people don't want to understand it. And I find myself reiterating more than once, right? But what I find is when people don't want to know what you're saying, right. they will act like they don't remember. They will act right. like they... They don't know what you're talking about. They don't understand. They don't understand. They can't comprehend. Right. But right. then later, right. they will come back and say, you know, I, I should have listened to what you were saying. You know, you were right about that. But I say, it's too late now, right. buddy. So speaking in that vein, okay, right, okay. we have to come up with the next meme, right? This, this was an interesting meme. And the person wrote above the article that he was uh, showing. Okay. Someone asked me, mm -hmm. why do you not care who wins elections? I mm -hmm. responded, white supremacy is the only, uh, only uncontested candidate. Okay. November is simply a decision as to who will manage it. <laughs> Say it again. Someone asked me, why do you not care who wins elections? I responded, white supremacy is the only uncontested candidate. Okay. November is simply a decision as to who will manage it, right? Mm -hmm. Biden offers nothing more, uh, uh, nothing but more war. Uh, Aristotle. Uh, uh, oh, wow. I what know is it, Aristotle? Aristotle. What is that? Yeah, aristocracy. Aristocracy. No, no, no. It's, it's austerity. Oh, it's okay. the word. I, I, I've heard it said, never seen it. Austerity and white supremacy without Trump. So he only offers... Okay. Uh, what is that at? It's at the bottom. A okay. star. Uh -huh, right okay. There. No, I can't even... I mean, you know, it's All small. Right. It's so small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Okay, people. So look. Going along with that aspect, which you didn't even see that meme because I didn't put it up. So let me oh, put it up real quick so people can see it because they didn't even see the meme. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, <laughs> I thought I had clicked it in. Okay, so people, that's the meme right there, right? Okay. And I thought it was very interesting, so I thought I would put it up there for you, right? Okay. Austerity. Wow. Yeah, boy. Do you know what that austerity is, is people? Austerity is a way of pretty much your cutting everything from the people okay. and they pretty much are going to have to suffer. That's what austerity is, right? All right, so here's another one that goes along with our theme tonight, right? Okay. Now, as you see in this one, you see there is a black male okay. behind bars and he's got a stick of some kind and he's trying to get to the is it food? Uh, loaf of bread. Okay. Right, right? Okay. Now, if you look on the other side, there's a black, a key. there's black economics, there's a key, which okay. means that he will be able to take the key and free himself. Free himself Get out, grab the bread, and head to black economic, economic free. But no, not this guy. <laughs> He's just going for the bread. And that goes along with our theme tonight okay. as I go through and I keep uh, doing I keep uh, doing this, right? So Those look, are good. Yeah. So okay. we've been through... We've been telling you in episodes 104 through 110 okay. to check out what's actually happening and to be aware of the type of messages. And we're going to be showing you a lot of messages tonight from some people who you really believe in. And we're going to show you where it's like it's time to get off the hamster wheel, right? 
it's time to get off the hamster wheel and that's what it is okay so look as we go on now okay so th that's interesting because he yeah, could is. easily grab the key have economic black economics grab the bread steal away and, and free himself and like free literally himself. That's because right. the only the other option is what bread He'll have his bread, but he'll still be sitting behind bars with the bread. But the key, he'll be sitting he's able to free bars himself. With the bread, right? Mm. Which brings us to this right here as we start our first review of the night, right? So remember the premise, right? The okay. premise of the show tonight okay. is speaking on you can present an idea but if people do not want to hear your idea okay. they will not listen to your idea and right. when because they are not ready to receive it right. but you plant seeds and you let the seeds grow right. and germinate and sometimes people come back to you when it's too late okay. it's too late to come back by the time that they said it but the plant the seeds will be planted and they can okay. go on and make their own Right? Okay. So look. The Yusef Hawkins yeah. storm over Brooklyn, right? Yeah. So this is an example of what we're talking about, right? Because we've been through and we, we've shown you that racism does not end with the election of with the election of Biden. Right. If Trump does not win, it does not mean that the end of racism has come and we can say hallelujah. Like many people have be have believed in that many okay. times and they have been found to be, guess what people? Right. They have been found to be absolutely, positively, absolutely, positively mm -hmm. wrong. Right? Now. Let me let me get this out the way now so that we can come back and really start to discuss this. Okay. Yeah. So you know, they they tell you, well, we've got to get Trump out of there because racism has been going on forever, right? And racism has been going on, but it really kicked up with Donald Trump. Where have we heard this message before? Where have we heard this message before? Right? And so we've heard this message many times before and so we decided that we were watching yeah this piece right? right we were watching this piece right and the idea of there being um how could i say the idea of there being mm -hmm. a need to get the person out of office okay. raises its idea in this piece and it is given by a person that everyone knows that everyone can appreciate right. and his name is spike lee right now we're going to go and break down what happened to yusef hawkins for people who don't know but we had to start with this because this goes to our concept that people aren't ready for the seeds that racism will not stop, that people will go for the bread to say that they're going to vote instead of going for the economic key, have black economics, free themselves from prison, get out, have black economics, get the bread, head on to a paradise, so to speak. So this is what Spike Lee has to say. Let me give you that headset. And then we're going to come back and describe what's happening with this story here, right? You know, I mean, it, it was like that every day for a long time. We had so many people coming by. I was politicians, rappers, actors. I mean, you name it. You had them just coming to the house. Whether you want it or not, you're considered a role model in our community. Now, pay close attention to what Spike Lee says here. It's very, very important you hear this. Now, this is 1989. That is 31 years ago. 
31 years ago and listen to what Spike Lee says and see if you don't hear something that's similar to what's happening today, being said today. Any advice considering that racial tensions are strained right now in New York City? Well, I think that the most important thing we have to do is vote the primary and election coming up in November and get Koch out of here because I think that his hand, you could say his thing was on the trigger too. I mean, uh, he's... Okay, let me back that up. Let me back that up. First thing that Spike Lee says is, I think that we need to vote and that Mayor Koch, Koch was the mayor at the time, okay. that... We need to get out there and vote because Mayor Koch's hand was on the trigger too. Why? Because his policies seem to be racist. So let's let's do it again. Coming up in November and get Koch out of here because I think that his hand, you could say his thing was on the trigger too. I mean, uh, he's used racial polarization to get elected, and I think it's, you know, it's backfired, and now the city is polarized like it's never been. Okay, did you hear that, people? That type of talk, mm -hmm. that type of talk... Is what we're in today? Is what <laughs> we are in today. And <laughs> what it. did the one person who put the meme up say? They said that racism will not end but it will be who you're electing to oversee it, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to end, but this is the same tired, same tired thing that we've heard many times before, right? right? right. Many times before we have heard this. It doesn't matter who's in office. It, it, well, it didn't matter. Well, the, same, the same thing happened when Obama was in office, right? Same thing happened when Bush was in the office and the president before him and the president before him. I mean, it's like, it's the same stuff is happening, right? And we're mm -hmm. continuing, continuously voting. Right. And um, it just makes me think about, like, I, I watched both conventions, the DNC, um, excuse me, and the um, RNC. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of star power in um, the DNC convention, right? Right. And I'm just like looking at all of these different celebrities and stuff, and I'm like waiting for one of them to say something about, about the George Floyd, uh, his Justice Act. Right. That the, that the, you know that the Nancy Pelosi and Schumer um, was supposed to push. For that right. bill to pass, right? Right. I mean, like, nobody talked about that. Nobody talked about uh, reparations. Um, I, I was disappointed, right? Because it's just like, it's, I don't know. You know how when you're a younger, when you're a kid, your only thought is, you know, spending time with friends, family, outside playing during the summer, riding your bike or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But when you become an adult, some of us, right? We kind of observe, start observing everything and we start to look at patterns, mm -hmm. right? All right. And this is becoming a pattern. And I'm noticing a pattern of how everybody, not everybody, but some people are, they're like constantly putting an icing on the cake, right? Mm -hmm. Just constantly making it, trying to look pretty instead of dealing with the issues. What's on the inside? What's on the inside? What do they say? Go, just go out and vote. We need your vote. Okay, so, but we are constantly voting. Constantly voting. We are not seeing change. No change. We see that it seems to be getting worse. Worse. And so, you know, the everyday person, you know, we're, we're using our voice as well as other um, podcasters, right? Right. But then, as well as some celebrities. Right. But the celebrities who I saw marching around at the DNC, I'm like thinking, are they clueless? Right? I think they're clueless. Like, I'm thinking that they are detached. Probably popping fresh. 
from the community. They're probably popping fresh. And but maybe it's a no, but maybe it's a, like, what do people do? You know, people like charity events. Right. That's just like a charity event for them. They'll get up and say, go vote. Yeah, a few words. And, and then they'll show up at the DNC. And then after that, they're like gone and mm. don't and totally detach from what's going on. Or either they'll jump on with the, what's the latest thing on Twitter without actually finding out what's actually going on. They're jumping on the latest hashtag. Right. right? Because the people, I mean, I've seen a, a Portia and I've seen um, a couple of other celebrities uh, down there, you know, in Kentucky, mm -hmm. you know, on the front lines fighting for, you know, Breonna Taylor and trying to get the attorney general to do his job, mm -hmm. right? We saw that lame dude speak at the RNC. He was just, he was an embarrassment, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but the thing is, is you see the people who are actually out there in the trenches and the people who are doing the work versus the people who are, I don't know if it's just a, a, a part of their- A photo op. A photo op. Yeah. So- because they're not asking for more. That's true. They're not Yousef, asking for more. Yousef Hawkins, Storm Over Brooklyn, right. HBO documentary just yeah. came out a few days ago. Right. On August 23rd. Well, a few weeks ago. Well, we, we, said four know, days. It's not. But anyway, August 23rd, 1989. Okay. 31 years ago. Okay. Yousef Hawkins was murdered by an angry mob in Bensonhurst, New York. Okay. Direct, director Muta Ali Mohammed. Yeah. The whole point of most of the people who came down to be, to stand next to Al Sharpton. Right. Was, who came to their house, as you see that the brother details this out. Right. Racism ends when you vote right. right racism will end when you vote the person that is in office out that is extremely a fallacy right. that is wrong that is not true right. it's the same words different year let's listen to this again so the brother finishes talking about how different people were coming to the house after yousef hawkins was Murder, and we're going to get into how that sets up because we want you to go watch the documentary. So here we go. Here we go. Whether you want it or not, you're considered a role model in our community. Any advice considering that racial tensions are strained right now in New York City? Well, I think that the most important thing we have to do is vote. The primary and election coming up in November and get Koch out of here because I think that his hand, you could say his pin was on the trigger too. I mean, uh, he's used racial polarization to get elected and I think it's, you know, it's backfired and now the city is polarized like it's never been. Okay, people, have you heard that before? Have you heard that with what they say about Donald Trump? It's the same playbook the same every thing. time. The Dems tell you that racism will be over when they were the ones who were doing it. Right. And we have always, we always tell you every time, I am for American black people. Right. I am not a party Democrat coon, and I'm not a party Republican coon, mm -hmm. and I definitely wouldn't be a party independent coon. 213-943-3358. The phone lines are open. Yeah. After you dial uh -huh. on your dial, press one and we'll let it, and that'll let us know that you want to speak and not just okay. listen to the show, right? So look, I am again, we are not party Democrat coons. We are not party Republican coons. We are Red definitely coons. not independent party. Raccoon. Um, That's right. You know what? It's interesting because hip hop's birthday was August 11th, mm -hmm. and this documentary was released on August the 12th. Okay. And in this documentary, we saw um, we saw the "Do the Right Thing" T-shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, some people protesting, and and that's the reason why hip hop was born. So. People can use to so we our voices can be used and heard, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and um, 
and just looking at this documentary, just watching it, it just made me think, man, I mean, it's just like it's a different day, right? It's a different year, different president in office, but it's the same, we're dealing with the same bull crap. With right, the same but the thing, crap. but the thing is, what pisses me off, and when I was um commenting, when I was watching um the observations podcast with you and Tanya, right? Uh-huh. So when I was watching that this uh, week, and then when I commented on on a subject, and it's very important, and I'm gonna push it to the end, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. We had the Justice Act mm-hmm. bill, right, which was supposed to prevent. Um, uh, or, or, uh, uh, police brutality, right? Mm -hmm. So it was supposed to, um, when a policeman commits a crime, Uh this makes them be held accountable. Right. Okay. So I don't want to say prevent, uh, prevent it, but it'll make them think about it twice before they murder someone without a, a, a weapon or, uh, so I mean, so I'm look. I'm watching you do all of this in my Come thought talk. process. But so and it's kind of like, um, so the, the it was two bills. You had the Justice Act, Tim Scott, and then you had the um, the the Democrats. They had the George Floyd uh, Justice uh, Bill. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm pissed because neither one of the bills were passed. They didn't pass either one of the bills, right? But then they're pushing this whole get out and vote. So I'm thinking, okay, but you want um, um, you want American black people, right, who have been carrying this party since way before we were born, right, to vote for you, but yet you don't even push a bill to save our lives and to help prevent, like, uh, uh, murder and, and, and abuse. I mean, right. it's just it's just frustrating. Like, it's just like, so I'm just like sitting here and I'm sitting in and when I was watching the DNC, I was just like literally watching it and getting pissed. Because I'm like, okay, yeah, but nobody's talking about the George Floyd bill. What happened to that? Why isn't that being pushed? I mean, it's just like, I'm just so tired of putting a little pretty icing on the cake it's all decorative, but we want y'all to get out there and vote. We're not going to necessarily do nothing for you people. And every couple of weeks, somebody's going to die. And then there's going to be a hashtag, right, from different people. And we'll march around in the circles. But what they forget is, what did Malcolm X do? Uh, Malcolm X. What did Martin Luther King do? He didn't just, they didn't just march, right? Mm-hmm. Along with marching, they also, he also made sure that the Civil Rights Act was pushed. He sat down with politicians. He negotiated. He got it done. He didn't just, you can't have one without the other. Unless we force them by using our vote to push policy, they can do it. They do it all the time. They do it for other groups. It can be done, people. But we can't keep on doing the same thing. It puts us on the hamster wheel. Listen, uh, Tanya Congress says it's a shame that they passed over a perfectly good bill just because a repub came up with it. Tim Scott. That's right. Now let's continue with this video here, right? So again, August twenty third, nineteen eighty nine, thirty one years ago, Yusef Hawkins was murdered right. by an angry Italian mob in Bensonhurst, okay. who mistakenly thought that they were coming to see a woman when in actuality they were coming to see about a car right. that was at a good used car that was at well we don't know how good the car was but it was a used car right. in the classifieds at a good price point of one of Yusef Hawkins friends right. and they went there not being informed about how detrimental it could be to go into what is now considered and was considered then a racist area. So let's continue on. While I will be the first to uphold a person's right to demonstrate. 
Now, so Mayor Dinkins, this is what Spike Lee was talking about. Spike Lee was talking about Mayor Dinkins and saying that we need to get, get out and vote for Dinkins. Get out there and vote for him because, you know, we got to get him out of here because Mayor Koch right. uh, ran on a racist platform. Okay. And that's why we need to get him out of here because basically what's happening is all because of him and right. his rhetoric. Right. Well, guess what, people? After. Mayor Dinkins got in there. He got in office. The people did get out of the boat. And they did get out of the boat. And they still were doing the same thing. And the protests kept going on because they wouldn't give up the people who had actually killed. It was a mob of 30 or more people who came with baseball bats. Someone had a pistol and shot him twice. Right. right? We're not going to give too much of away because we want you to see... Right. uh, Yusef Hawkins storm over Brooklyn. But listen to what Mayor Dinkins says. And here, if you haven't heard this recently. Right. While I will be the first to uphold a person's right to demonstrate regarding perceived injustice, I want it to be clear that anyone who abuses that right by engaging in lawless activity will be subject to the fullest legal sanctions. Will be subject to the Fullest legal sanctions. Where do we where did we hear that just recently, people? Where did we hear that just recently? Oh, we heard it just recently. We heard it uh, recently, just recently. Let me drop this down. We heard it recently. We heard it recently. Okay with what Biden is saying to try to come back and come back. What Trump is saying, which right. Trump has been saying all the time, right. it has to be law and order. Right. So we're coming to give you, bring you the facts of it. I mean, to me, it, it's the stupidest thing to me because it's just like, I love how people, they take bits and pieces of history and they forgot how the two and two went together, right? Right. So the civil rights movement, they did not just um, march. march and protest, right? And they didn't just do that. They also, he also made sure he sat down with politicians and he, and he told him, hey, if you want my people's vote, this bill has to pass. Like, so I'm just like sitting back. I remember... I'm like sitting back looking at this and I'm just thinking, okay, but I see the marching and the protesting going on, right? But people are not like pushing that, hey, this is the reform. This is the bill that needs to be passed. Right. Like, because this is horrific that innocent black men, women, and children are being murdered, right? By unlawful police. I mean, I mean, they're 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 not oh, going oh, going by the law. They are kind of doing whatever they want to do, right? Mm-hmm. So that doesn't make them good people. So what, what they're doing is unlawful, and they're able to get away with it. And none of the politicians are stopping them, in which they they could because we seen many bills passed, mm-hmm. right? And we seen the both parties come together to push a bill, mm-hmm. but both parties. It looks like they don't deem it important to push a bill that protects protect American black American people. Black people right? right. So this documentary, Storm Over Brooklyn, reminds us of the Street Stars documentaries that we used to sell out the store yeah. in the two thousands. Great right? documentary. Great documentaries. It's well put okay. together. So let's break it down. Intro to setup of the doc. That's a right. ten. Story. And through line, that's a 10. Tension, the building the tension of the piece, that's 10. Making Yusef a person. Bringing, who was Yusef Hawkins? That's a 10. Information, the information that's put through this documentary that's on HBO is uh, seamless. That's a 10. Story through editing, the editing of the story, the use of animation to tell the story of how, from a, a bird's eye, God's view, 
looking down on the city and describing the, the streets where it happened at the oh, main okay. street cross street and using yeah. an animation to tell the story that yeah. is a 10 editing is excellent yeah. uh connection to today it is well delivered the connection to today right right yusef hawkins storm over brooklyn that my people is yeah. a 10. It is, it is a 10. It well, is well, worked. well done. And you can tell that it was put together with, it wasn't rushed together. No, it wasn't. Like they took the time to like every little aspect, like they talked like to the family members, to friends. Um, he, uh, information from the media, right? Mm -hmm. uh, reports. Um, we saw uh, footage from the police department. Um, he was very thorough. And I love how he tied in the Dinkins, right? Running for, prior to him, you know, winning the vote, you know, to become mayor prior to that. Mm -hmm. But he tied in how uh, we need to get out there and vote for Dinkins and, and how this vote is going to make a change, you know, and we need to do it. And then I love how um, the, he, the document, uh, documentarian, how once Deacons got in office, he just also captured that footage. He showed you that nothing changed. He captured that racism that footage. still existed. I, I get tired of people who are popping fresh everything. They were popping fresh when Obama, they never voted before. I've been registering people to vote since I was 19 years old. I was registering people to vote at 19. That is 30 years ago because I'm 49. I get tired of the pop and fresh people who come on, they see something. We went through a lot of agony of defeat before we got to President Obama and we thought this was it. And you know what happened after eight years and did you know you have to watch our show. We have a show a show that comes on five time five yeah. times a week. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. It's Hashtag TFR Podcast Live yeah. OB. Yeah. That's TFR Podcast Live presents observations with myself yeah. and my sister Tanya M. Congress. Yeah. And we come on Monday through Friday, 9 30 a.m. Yeah. Pacific, 12 30 p.m. Eastern. Right. And we come on and we drop information, right? right? right. And we talked about how. You go. You went through a lot of agony and defeat, and when you got to Obama, you find out what happened. More people right. died at the hands of the police, and with Obama than they did with Trump. How somehow, mm -hmm. somehow though, mm -hmm. somehow, okay. I don't know how. I don't know how this is happening, but somehow, okay. you know, what, let me somehow say. we get we get the message okay. that. You know, uh, how can I say? Somehow we get the message that really it's going to change if we put somebody else in there, which is the same message right. that Spike Lee gave, right? Same message right. that Spike Lee gave. You know, the show, the Daily Show. What I love about that show is how, um, for many of you who are like on the go or busy with work or school, although we're doing all, most people have to do that from home, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can listen to the podcast and get your dose of actually like the daily news because you guys talk about daily what's going on, like in real time, actually, real right? Real time. Um, but you know what the thing about it is is that okay so Martin Luther King he died right but then we had the other civil rights leaders who like we had with Jesse Jackson who else was Al Sharpton James Clyburn or whatever but he's, no, a, politician. he's a politician he's a politician he's a politician he was in SNCC, but what about but the one but um but many of them or the Congressional Black Caucus right 
um, many of them because it's kind of is it kind of conflated a little a little like it. Um, I think because when we see a lot of because we even see posters and stuff like when we saw with Obama, I think sometimes I know I did previously. I would mix the two together, right? When I would see the Maxine Waters, and whenever I would see a black politician, you would think about I would civil think rights of, leader, right? Right. And so that's now true. I know that that's not the case. It's, everybody has different agendas, right? So, but the thing is, for the Jesse Jackson, right, and for the Al Sharptons, right, mm -hmm. and um. I, I'm surprised that, especially Jesse was around when, uh, or ha and Harry Villafonte was around, you know. I'm surprised that uh, Jesse didn't, it was, didn't kind of push, okay, guys, along with the marching, we have to tell them if they want our vote, they have to do this. Because he was there. You know what? You see someone get a bullet through their throat, and what would you do? They shot down one, okay, they but, shot down two. So tell me what the, am I supposed to that do? that love's going to get you. That's right. So look, people. <laughs> listen, so, so remember, so um, remember this. Racism does not stop. Racism does not stop. Okay. Right? Well, then, I mean, what are you going to vote wait for? Minute, wait a minute. Racism does not stop when you vote for the other party. That's what the Democrats always tell you. Racism does not stop. What's going on to Stereo? He just okay. said that he's out of FB jail. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay. You know what I mean? Stereo. So no, listen. but no. What are you going to? I said vote, but I me I meant to say, why are we and others? What is the purpose of marching if you are not going to tell them? Look, if you want our vote, this is what needs to be passed. We see that it can be done. Right. It's been done before. People still do it today. They get it done. But why do you feel that most people who vote other Democrats, ethnic groups? Right. Let's be clear. Other ethnic groups get yeah, it done. Because I typed in. What did I type right, right. in? Yeah. Uh, right. Black. Yeah. Well, I instead of saying American blacks, I just said the black diaspora because. Under the democratic umbrella now, right? And when we see on these TV shows, we it's see foreigners. African um, Americans, Haitian Americans, uh, Dominican uh, Americans. So it's so it's kind of like I'm saying now. I'm calling out like everybody, right? So it's not just um, American blacks. I'm saying for all the other groups who uh, manifest as black, right? So what I'm saying is. Okay, so if we're going to march, right, we need to, along with the marching, we need to say, hey, we're holding our vote. Unless this bill doesn't get passed and you don't negotiate with the other party the way you negotiate with, for everything else, we're not going to come out and vote. So right. why don't people start holding their so, votes? So remember what happened with Mayor Dinkins in New York 31 years ago right. when Spike Lee said this. In our community. Any advice considering that racial tensions are strained right now in New York City? Well, I think that the most important thing we have to do is vote. The primary and election coming up in November and get Koch out of here because I think that his hand, you could say his thing was on the trigger too. I mean, uh, he's used racial polarization to get elected and I think... Same message 31 Same. years ago. You can go back 61 years ago. Same message talking to people who are uh, disenfranchised did it with Obama. by the people. They right. did it with Obama. They're doing it now with Kamala. And, and, and more people, more right. people die under Obama right now, black than under under Trump right now. So people, as we continue to go on with American black figures okay. and mm -hmm. our American black foremothers, you know, a lot of people, they're constantly talking about they're going to go off, they got to go back to the motherland, and they got to the motherland. First of all, I don't know that land. I wasn't born there. Do you know how to uh, lay out an electrical grid? Do you know how to, because that's what you're going to need to know, because you need to be watching 
Dr. Moonbee, because she's right there in Kenya, but she covers the whole 54 countries, hopefully one day 54 states of uh, the African continent, right? right? And she lays it out, and then when you talk about rolling outages, I don't come from a place that has rolling outages. We don't come, we come from the first world. Why would we want to go there? So a lot of times people don't know what's going on. So we here at the Film Review, TFR Podcast Live, make sure that we bring you this segment, which is called American Black Figures. In this case, we call it American Black Figures because some of these people are still alive. Usually we call it American Mm -hmm. Black Historical Figures, right? But some of these people are still alive, some of these women. And, And, you know, the backbone of it all is the American black woman. That's right. The backbone of all this is the American black woman. And I just found out that they made the phone lines Fukazi. Okay. And no one is hearing it. So that's why they're not (laughs) calling it on the phone line. But that's okay because you hear us on all the four streaming platforms. Well, you do realize that you're going to have this issue up until November, right? Right. This (laughs) issue up until until after November November because they don't want the people to call in and be giving their opinions right now. But we're going to work this out. I don't know what's going on. But we're going to get with the people. So look, people. First people. First person, right? Okay. Lisa Gilolter. Right? This is this woman right here in the green. Green background. Okay. People, do you know how you grab those? You know, there's the memes, but then there's the gifs Mm -hmm. with the cartoons. She created that. If you didn't know, we're going through the inventors. We're going through the inventors. You see, most of the time, when we tell you, when we tell you that Pete, that life was made easier through American blacks, this is true indeed. And so this is what it is, right? Lisa G. Lochter, she created GIFs, right? Now, the next person up is Charlotta or Carlotta. Okay. Right? You know, they're saying that... Shh, they're saying that Kamala was is the first African-American to run for VP. First African-American female to run for VP. Well, she's neither African. She's neither... Well, she's American, but she's more like Indian American and Jamaican American combined. She's not African American because to be African American, technically, other if, unless you're being called Africa American, that's what the Africans and Nigerians that come over they call themselves Africa American because they want to distinguish themselves from African Americans. The term that Jesse Jackson coined back in the eighties, right? right? You got to know these little tidbits here to be able to move you forward, right? So look, she's not American black because she doesn't come from the lineage of 1619, but however, this woman right here, Carlotta Bass, was the first woman to run on a political party the progressive party now you know they've taken progressive right. and swallowed it up but progressive was a party that black people were involved in in 1952 mm-hmm. and she was the vi- vice presidential choice right yes. here carlotta bass from right? south carolina She's that's from right sumter south carolina 1952 so she mm-hmm. is actually the first and right. she's also what is she She's a... Uh, she's a Delta. She's a Delta. Well, she was a Delta. She was a Delta. Yeah. Once a Delta, always a Delta, right. even into history, even in, right? Right, right? Even into ancestry, And right? you know what makes this woman who ran for vice president special is that she was a civil rights activist. Mm-hmm. She was actually for the people. She was also an educator. She was a newspaper publisher and editor. Um, She focused on um, issues as a civil rights actor, such as, I mean, civil rights activist. I said civil rights 
actor because I'm thinking about some of the people that was at the DNC. Oh, um, she was a civil rights uh, activist and she focused on like uh, housing rights for black people, voting rights for black people, labor rights for black people, as well as police brutality and harassment. See, these, these things have been going on for a long time. We just went back to 1952. And I'm sure they were telling, they were telling the American blacks then, let's vote this person out because that racism came in with them. And we get in there, it's gonna be a totally different lifestyle. They are totally wrong. Sarah Good. Now we're gonna run through these because you have to go do your research for important American black figures, right? The American Black Foremothers, right? These are inventors. She was a she was a person who was into activism, into politics. Mm -hmm. But the rest of these are inventors. American Black women who are inventors. The backbone of this, Sarah Good. Okay. She created the first retractable bed. She was also the first. American black woman to have a patent. She patented the retractable bed. So when you see the retractable bed, you can see that she did that. You see how we say that American blacks are the ones that admitted that nothing is invented, that nothing that makes it more comparable for us today in this world was invented by anybody else. But us, I mean, these different immigrants coming to the country, they got a lot of catching up to do. Number four, Dr. Patricia Bath, right? Okay. She is a ophthalmologist, right? Right here. Right here. She's an ophthalmologist, right? Mm -hmm. Created laser... Falco, you know how people have cataracts? Mm -hmm. This is the lady who created the laser that mends the cataracts, right? Uh, it mends the cataracts from human eyes. Before she came out with this creation, okay. they had nothing for human beings, right? Okay. Number five, okay. Betty W. Harris, right? Okay. American Black chemist okay. patented spot test right? right what is a spot test right okay. a spot test it, it it indicates and identifies explosives in the field okay. so when you see people who are going out and they have they're able to gauge where explosives are in war mm -hmm. it is because of this woman that they are able to do it her name again is Betty W. Harris, right? Okay. Number six is Mary Van uh, Britton Brown, right? Are you are you ready for what Mary? Let me say her name again. Mary mm -hmm. Van Britton Brown and created. Yes. Where she, she created the first home security system. Yeah. Got her patent for the first. Home security system, right? So that means that when you're at home and you go, dip, 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 dip. Mm -hmm. that's her. This woman created that. But when you see the TV commercials, mm -hmm. you think mm -hmm. that somebody Caucasian made it, but it was really this woman right here, right? It's time for you to know American black figures. Quit trying to run someplace. Show me the equivalent in Africa of these women right here at the top. Show me the equivalent of that. I like that we're going over this because I remember these ladies from Black, when we did Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So we keep reiterating it over and over again. Well, you That's know, good. during Black History Month, I did the men. Well, I did the women. I did uh, her. Okay, you did her. Right, okay. Um, Eileen Eagland, right here. Okay. Right, number no 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 no. Where am I? Where am I? Am I am I out of order here? 
I'm looking number seven. Number seven. Okay. Excuse me. Number seven is Mary Patrice. No, that's not right either. Ugh. Number seven. No, no, I'm out of order here. Wait a minute. Hold it. Wait a minute. Number seven. Underneath. Right here. Is Sarah Boone. Right? Now I have Elijah McCoy up in the corner because Elijah McCoy mm -hmm. created the sprinkler system. So when you think about the sprinkler system, you go t -t 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 and it sprinkles and it revolves and it turns and it sprays the whole lawn. That's him. But he also created the first ironing board, right? And what does Elijah and Sarah uh, Sarah have in common? Sarah Boone have a comment? Mm -hmm. When he created the ironing board, she used it, but you know, the ironing boards would come out the wall and it would have two legs and it would be in the wall. Mm -hmm. And it would come down and it would have two legs, right? Mm -hmm. And it was colored red, black, and green, right? right. However, she made a, an improvement to it so that the ironing board would stand alone so when it slid down it locks into place and you put it down so that you can iron mm -hmm. she created the mechanism that was the improvement so it could stand alone from the wall okay she improved upon it that is sarah boom right sarah boom was a woman she was mm -hmm. a small woman okay people <laughs> <laughs> eileen eagland Okay. You know what Eileen Eaglin invented? What? She invented the clothes wringer for washing machines, oh. you see. She created the clothes wringer for washing machines, right? Number nine. Elise, Elisa, no, Alice Augusta Bell. American black chemist, right? Created the Bell Method. Now, what is the Bell Method, you might ask, right? The most effective treatment for leprosy. Wow. The Bell Method. This woman right wow. here, right? Mm -hmm. Alice Augusta Bell. Okay. Right? That's num number 10. Number 10. Okay. Mary... Beatrice Davidson mm -hmm. Kenner. These okay. are long names. <laughs> Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner. What the, What do you think she created? Just looking at her, what do you think she created? Right here. What do you think she created? Did she create, let's see. Okay. Did she, her. Wait, which one? Let's see. I'm looking at your I'm hand right there. Okay, right I see. Right, right, I'm looking uh -huh. at the screen. Okay. Did she create like uh, either hair, makeup, cosmetics. Because I'm looking at her hair and her makeup. Yeah, her hair and her makeup are flawless. Just refresh. They said they said the FB keeps freezing. See, they're freezing on this information right here. They only want to just refresh, like right? Just refresh, right? So look, <laughs> this woman right here, she created the the uh, sanitary belt. Oh. With moisture proof napkin okay. pocket. Feminine product. She patented it. So it was though. a belt, and you know how the tampons now have the little stickies to hold on. Right. Well, then it had a belt. Wow. And for many years, they would not push the patent through and would not distribute her product because of segregation wow. but you know women needed that product yeah. so much so they could live a life and be on the move without it so she created the first sanitary napkin she also people when you go to the restroom okay and you see the toilet paper where it's holding at mm -hmm. she created that wow so when you're in the bathroom and mm -hmm. you're pulling the toilet people paper off the roll mm -hmm. she created the toilet paper holder wow. she shares the patent with her sister nice. mildred davidson wow. that's right isn't that something that so is. Did, did, that is you thought a caucasian made that didn't you 
Yeah, you did. You just assume because Caucasians just have everything. Like when you see the woman, you see this woman made the laser for cataracts, but every time you go to the doctor, there's a Caucasian doing it and not an American bloody. We have to get our kids into the sciences. We have to get our kids ready because when we go to the doctor, we see people who don't look like us and they treat us like crap. Number 11, or we need more people to take over and advance on the inventions like Sarah Boone okay. did for Elijah. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. She advanced on it, so we need our people to keep advancing on this. Number 11, Dr. Valerie L. Thomas. Okay. You know when you watch Star Wars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you watch Star Wars and you mm -hmm. see the scene where you see Princess Leia, mm -hmm. and it's the first time that you see Princess Leia because she's programming R2-D2 and... Luke Skywalker sees mm -hmm. her in a 3D projection. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And she says, this is Princess Leia and I'm being held by such and such and such and such, right? Mm -hmm. Well, she created... She's an engineer. Is she an architect? She, she created... <laughs> she invented the illusion mm -hmm. transmitter. Wow. A 3D image like Star Wars, so wow. it will shoot with mirrors, it will shoot the image, and okay. it can be projected, okay. right, someplace else. Star, Star Trek, too, don't forget. Star, no, 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 Star, Star. Didn't Star Trek have a, um... No, 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 they, they, they transport it. Oh, okay. This is just a 3D image. Okay. Message. Okay. So you can see something in the okay. sky. So you have to watch out because they're okay. gonna use oh, they're gonna yeah. use her <laughs> technology wrong. Yeah. This woman right here created the three D uh, illusion mm -hmm. transmitter. Mm -hmm. They're gonna use it wrong, and they're gonna start putting the what you think are the religious deities. In, am I talking too much? The religious deities in the sky, and okay. you're gonna believe that they're actually walking and talking. Because they're going to use her technology wrong. That's not what she made it for. Right. She made it for good. Like right. Einstein developed right. the atom, the development of splitting the atom for good. Right. But someone took his technology and made it into a bomb to mm -hmm. destroy people. But anyway, same thing with her. So she created this, right? Is, and then the, is that what they tried to do with Prince? Do you remember at the Super Bowl? Holograms. The That's holograms. Right. That's okay. right. That's what it is. A 3D okay. transmitter, right? Okay. Number 12. Shirley Ann Jackson. Okay. Scientific researcher. That's this young woman at the end right here, right? Okay. What did she create? Enabled. She researched mm -hmm. and she created research that enabled mobile fax. Okay. Touch tone telephone. Okay. Remember, because remember, it was rotary. Yeah. And touch tone came in as That's we true. were getting noticed. This woman right here. Right here. Okay. Uh, uh, Shirley Ann Jackson. Okay. Solar cells, fiber optic cables. Okay. Um, let's just say behind car. Uh, the technology that's behind caller ID mm -hmm. wow. and call waiting. Wow. This woman. Do you wow. know your historic black figures? Do you know your American black foremothers? Right. Why are we running? Why are we right. going someplace else? When right. Show me people who have come up with something like this. Right. Over over in Africa, it's good to know where we come from, but right here, right. these women are laying uh, laid this out and go research. We we need you to go research, right? I gave you a little bit more than just names right. because we need you to go out and research right. these American black figures, right. American black foremothers. Uh, hashtag TFR podcast live discussion. That's right, people. Right. As we, we tell you this. All right, people. So That's why we... you deserve more. Like, uh, what's the, the, what is it? Knowledge is power. That was, uh, 
Lou School Rawls. Rawls. Oh. Lou Rawls and the United oh, Negro College, College Fund, Fund, right? Because a mind is a, a terrible, terrible thing, thing to waste, right? right? So that's why your power is in your vote. Do not just throw it away. Don't take it for granted. Use it. Now, here, here's a person who uh, really is stepping into the politicians here in Vegas. And I thought this was an interesting mm -hmm. meme. And I, and, I, and I said, well, let me go on ahead and push this through, right? Let, let me read what he says here. I thought it was interesting, so I put it up. So these are different politicians that are on the Democrat line. Okay. Group Coonan for sure are black elected, elected, elected officials selling us out again, backing the author of the crime bill and the fake black Indian woman, and I say woman lightly. I know 14 of these and could tell you stories about all of them that would shock you. Garrett J. LaDuff, wow. right? So he put that up there and he says he knows I'm gonna they, they make you this, shake you up, right? So I can respect him for that. I mean, because it's just like, People need to, like, this is some serious stuff. Like, you keep putting people in office. Your children are being murdered in the street, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter f from what economic background you're from. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Look at uh, Bill Cosby's son was murdered in the street. Yes, he was. You see what I'm saying? And so, Bill Cosby is a wealthy man. Yes, he is. So, and it doesn't matter from what economic background you come from. If you don't have kids, what about your nieces and your nephews and your cousins and your godchildren? I mean, stop just giving your damn vote away and right. and to people who do not respect you. Right. I mean, this is serious. I'm glad he did that. I mean, you have to call people out. The woman called herself... Didn't we not see the footage? People don't watch TV. Did, did we not see the footage on the program where Kamala called herself a top cop? Right. She she was she talked about being the top and cop. And now she backing up. Now she and, backing and then up. and it's like and then they showed all of these different people who who went to her and asked for uh help as far as all of these uh black people being arrested and charged heavily like what about the woman i mean what's what's like seared in my brain is the 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 young black woman whose daughter has sickle cell anemia right i had a family member in my family with sickle cell anemia but 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 who was an adult but this is a little girl and her child has sickle cell anemia and and the woman had documentation she had uh taken to the principal she took to the Board of Education. She did everything she was supposed to. And when her daughter would miss days of school because she was going through a sickle cell crisis, mm -hmm. you know, they're holding it against this woman. Her daughter was debilitated. The little girl could not walk. She's crawling around the house until her mother was able to get her a wheelchair. But she's not in a state to go to school. And this woman had documentation again from the position. She did everything she was supposed to. And they put this woman in jail. This woman ended up being homeless on the street over this because she lost her job. I mean, this stuff is serious. So this all this coonery, oh, Kamala, vote for her just because she black. Give me a fucking break. Give me a break. Okay, so... I'm sorry, but it's just people are so stupid. And then what about Mytrice Richardson? I mean, it goes on and on. Do, is it just like it's the information stopped in California? Do not only the black people that was in California know how it really went down, I think that's and the rest I mean. of the America don't know, or are they choosing to? I this think is they, making I me think, think of what you were talking about. Are they choosing to like turn the other, uh, not cheek, but turn off their ears, <laughs> close their eyes? Their are they turn? Are they choosing not to care what happened? Yeah, I think they're choosing not to care because they want to have this illusion. But don't they realize the same thing is going to happen once this group gets in office? 
like it's gonna be the same thing and they talking about they talking about uh what's his name they talking about uh president trump and 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 his his affiliation with the police department i mean it's gonna be the same thing like i'm not a republican i'm not a trump supporter i mean look at what he's He's complicit in, 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 in what's going on and what, what they're doing to the black community. I mean, supposedly he has a relationship with the police department and he hasn't done anything about it. So he doesn't care about black lives. So, so Trump doesn't care about black lives and clearly Biden and Kamala don't. So, but they're torn that line right now. They're lying to the people. We didn't show you. We showed you something 31 years ago. We showed you something... 52 years ago. If you're just now tuning in, you're watching TFR Podcast Live. Hashtag TFR Podcast Live. Simulcasting on Periscope, Vimeo, on uh, YouTube, at the Film Review Life channel. Make sure you go and subscribe. And of course, on FB, on Crazy on Dion page, right. and the Film Review Movies, Music, Culture, Politics Society page right. on Facebook, make sure that you subscribe. All of but, this, I'm sorry, is just making me reevaluate things. I'm looking at the people who are like pushing this whole fake scenario along. Like the people who are performing at the DNC and all these people, oh, vote for Kamala and, and Biden, and, and but yet they're not pushing. I could see if, if the celebrities, the ones who are like huge DNC people, so let's call them the DNC celebrities. Okay. They're not independent people. They're the DNC celebrities. Fine. So let's say I could respect the fact if the DNC celebrities were saying, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to vote for Kamala and Biden because we have spoke to them. And they know that it's important that we push the George Floyd Act bill. Right, so this is what they're gonna do for us because we're telling you, our people, to vote for them. So this is because I'm the spokesman. Look, I'd be clearly that's what they're doing because I am the spokesman for my people. I told the DMC if they want my people to vote, then they need to pass that bill before the election. Now it can be done, but they're not doing that. Yeah, so yeah. that's just making me look at them kind of like. Okay, but you're really not. You, yeah, you truly are uh, 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 just a, ce a celebrity. Mr. Coon for the Democrat Party. See, it, it's not good to be a coon the for the Democrats. It's not good to be a coon for the Repubs. And it's definitely not good to be a coon for the My thing is, if you are not for your people, right, then just just do what you do. I mean, let everybody focus on what they're, if, if you're a scientist, just work on the sciences, on science stuff, right? If you're a singer, hey, just sing. If you are a basketball player, dribble the ball. So, you know, so if, if you are not going to <laughs> push that so policies are being pushed before. Like and, and gave hearts. Okay. This hey, is Philly. definitely a hot button topic. <laughs> Hi, Philly. <laughs> hey, Philly. Hey, yes, Philly. Yes, yes. But this pisses me off because, like, even like Philly, he's family, right? He has a son. Like, we love his son, right? So we have to think about our children. So if you guys, like, if they want our vote, we should ask for something more than just a, a, a photo op with them. They need to be pushing the bill. Specifically, they need to be pushing that George Floyd bill. Or they should have. Or they should have. They really should have. They should have not torpedoed Tim yeah, Scott because he was him. a he was a Republican, black Republican right. in the Senate that had a bill. A and again, deal. we keep on telling you that the Senate passes a bill, the House passes their right. version of the bill, the House bill comes right. over the Senate, they work it out, they compromise, they. They do amendments. They put the bill, bill together. Right. The Senate passes it. Goes right. back over to the House. The and House puts the not. money on it. And then they put it out there. But they chose not they to. They chose they, not to. This is what they pisses playing, me off. Women. They, they were playing politics. Right. And saying that when Joe Biden get in. Meanwhile, how many people have died Right. Since they were playing politics. But who were they politics. playing politics with whose lives? They were playing politics with American black exactly. people's lives. And you want so, me to vote for you? So why would you... Do that when and everybody is quiet. 
because they have to ask then the questions have to be answered well how come you scuttled the bill in the senate when this is how government is supposed to work right so look people here's another something that they don't really tell you right and so we're going to tell you now 85 percent of white people that are killed in america okay. each year are murdered by other white people right and then the meme goes on to say we never hear about white on white crime. However, right. when you watch TFR Podcast Live, we talk about white on white crime right. together. Did you watch episode eight of TFR Podcast Live right. OB? When you watch that, we show you that what are you looking at right. but the beginning of a civil war between white factions, right? right? And it's white on white crime all the time right. and they never tell you about it but we tell you about it because right. most of the time, 85% of whites are killed by it. So I don't know why they would be, uh, why they would be uh, upset when they have single white female right. or they have the boy next door. Remember that movie? And then he was a <laughs> serial killer yeah. and you know, they really needed some fan app. But anyway, people. What is fan app? You fan have to app. explain. Fan app is a drug for uh, schizophrenia when people say I hear voices they're looking at me and we, we, we talked about that on one of the on episodes the observations on the observations when we show you the commercial for right. FANAP and it shows you they're looking at me and these are the same people who get people killed and they're and looking they, at this older black man yeah she's looking at an older black man and saying the black man is staring at me you and have he's to just see going it, about his right? business in the commercial alright so our next film review for tonight is 808 the heart of the beat that changed music right right produced in 2015 808 details the creation of the drum machine right. made famous by musicians across the globe beginning with planet rock yeah. by soul sonic force right play at your own risk planet patrol right let the music play, Shannon. It's yours. Da -da 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 -da. Cha, that's an 808 produced by Rick Rubin, T. Yeah. LaRock, and yeah. uh, Jazzy J. A sexual healing. Marvin Gaye yeah. went into the studio overseas yeah. and used the drum machine, used the 808 drum machine to produce sexual healing. You have to see this documentary yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. Paul Revere. Yeah. The Beastie Boys, right? Yeah. And also another uh, production by mm -hmm. Rick Rubin, right? Yeah. And Jimmy Jam, list, Terry Lewis. Yeah, Jimmy Jam and Terry SOS Lewis band. for the SOS band. That yeah. whole sound, uh, just be good to me. That whole SOS sound is yeah. exclusively 808 because that was what was in the studio at the time when they went up yeah. to produce and they used it. And the 808 is a monster, yeah. right? So what makes this documentary so good is it yeah. introduces you to the creator of the Rolling 808, yeah. a Japanese uh, creator. And they actually yeah. broke down how they created the sounds. Because as we were watching the documentary, I said, are they going to show how to make the sound, how they made the sounds? And they actually break it down on yeah. how yeah. they made the sounds. Intro setup of the doc is a 10. Yeah. Storyline through line is a 10. The yeah. use of animation to tell the story of how it crossed the globe, that's 10. Yeah. Introducing the founder of Roland, that's yeah, that 10. Was nice. Information, the information is seamless in this documentary. Yeah. Very important, that's a 10. Yeah. Story through editing the editing on it the way that they use j cuts l cuts and they give you the music yeah. and they give you the background of the music and actually talk to the people who actually made it that is a 10 connecting the sound then to now yeah. that's a 10 yeah. 808 the heart of the beat that changed music yeah. what what do you rate it what do i you would rate give it? it a 10 you know why because I love like hearing all the different stories mm -hmm. and um, I would give it a 10 and the documentary like it moved like really quickly and it was full of information and I mean 
the 808 so i expected to to learn more things about like the different like hip-hop artists right mm -hmm. but when he talked about uh marvin gay right mm -hmm. and he was the first i believe with r&b artists to, to use, use the, the 808, 808 and yeah. then uh when jimmy jam and terry lewis talked about like uh using the 808 and the SOS band as well as other groups that they worked with. I mean, this is, it was interesting. And then they talked about Phil Collins, how he used the 808. And, yeah. and I, there's an yeah. interesting, interesting backstory to sexual healing. When you yeah. listen to the record yeah. and when you watch the documentary, you're going to say, yeah. And they show you right in the documentary about it. Right. Yeah. So people, have you been watching Lovecraft? You know, we oh, yeah. reviewed Lovecraft a couple of episodes back, right? right? But Lovecraft, that is not the best show on television. So episode one was good. You yeah. got a new look at blood suckers. Yeah. Episode two was, uh, it was like if it was a sophomore yeah. film, like it was the so not a sophomore film, but if it was like a sophomore attempt in the yeah. movie theater, it was like ah, uh, but ah, uh, but episode three, right? It was kind of deep, in a way. It's called Holy Ghost, yeah. right? Yeah. Dope as all out. Yeah. Must watch. Yeah. The house, the ghost. The races yep. and the come upence, right? Yeah. Episode four is coming on tonight. We're gonna be glued in front of the television set. Yeah. A history of violence. That episode is called, right? Yeah. And what do you have to say about that episode, Holy Ghost? Man. You learn something about the protagonist. Right. You learn that though, and that's what men need to learn. That just because a woman is dances on the dance floor doesn't mm -hmm. mean that she's one that has had experience oh, and that's right. what we'll say yeah. right so go ahead you know what i was i can't think of it now because i have it written down in this um it's not with me now but it made me think of i was trying to type in the title of the book what i'll have it next week it made me think of the experiments you know that were done on black people Mm -hmm. Because there's an actual uh, book, and I can't think of the title of the book. And in, in this book, it gives you the history of um, the black, black people's relationship with uh, the medical industry. Medical industry. And so when I saw this episode, and I was wondering, I said, I wonder how many people are watching this episode, and they think it's just like fiction. Fiction. But little do they know that they were doing, they did a lot of grotesque experiments, experiments on with me. black people. Black children. Men, women, and children, That's right? right? That's so right. when they show, if you haven't seen it, you'll see it. But those that have seen it, and they talk about the doctor, you know, in this episode, who mm -hmm. did these experiments. And you see how they took black people's body parts and all of this crazy stuff and, you know, and um yeah that was that's why i said it was it was a deep episode because then you know and then you'll see in this episode how she did call on her um called on her her better angels would you say yeah or are they like her still ancestors yeah 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 you, you'll see that that's how we'll leave it okay yeah cool. here's something before we continue on with the reviews, here's right. something we saw that came across the memes. A few people had this, right? Mm -hmm. But this is just hilarious. And we're going to play it right now because, well, you'll see. Just watch. <laughs> just watch. Hey! Check out Now this this guy is a little Correct. person, right? It's a, he's a midget, but it's the way that he just fly. It's like the person breaks and, and he just he just <laughs> he flies into the console, right? It's just it's just the most hilarious 
most hilariousness that you're going to see. So we're going to play this again. Let's, let's watch this now. Now, he's being hard, right? Being and cool. everybody was being cool and being hard, rapping the patois, right? And watch this, watch this. Hey, yo! Back up, go, yo! came across and it just tickled me so I I just had to you know just play that now look people Tariq now she had that uh, he had it first but then yeah. there were some other people who had it too so look people have you ever seen a little baby that has the strength of Samson and we're going to show this this is this little baby girl and watch what happens something is not going right in the household in our opinion for this to be taking place but watch when she plants the left foot when she plants the left foot she goes oh watch well, listen now listen watch this She plants that left foot and she goes, oh, and she closed the refrigerator. The woman gets out. When the just, woman gets out, it's, it stops there. But when the woman gets out, the little girl is like really crying. She is really upset that she did not hurt that woman. I don't know like, if it's oh. a mother or a relative or, or a friend of the well, family. What it is, something is going Somebody, wrong that's, that person in the house. That person pissed that little baby pain, off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody so, pissed her off. You know, when you're sitting there and you're sitting there in your <laughs> bra and panties, right? Oh. This meme right here was funny. Little girl exposes her her mom on Facebook Live. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Now, watch watch where the little girl is positioned, right? Check this out right here. What's next? Y'all see my mini meme? Mommy, what's that smell? That's the um the plants from outside. They smell stink. I know, it does stink. I thought it was you. Stop fucking playing with me. Get the f No. No. She said She said, What's that smell? Oh, mommy, I, I thought it was you. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't like, get out of here when when the when the kids expose the parents, like, what's going on, man? What's going on? Like, what's really good? Like, what's really, what's really good? You know, there, there was some, there was some funking going on. It wasn't Parliament Funkadelic. You understand what I'm saying? Kids are innocent. They didn't know. See, they didn't. She didn't know that they. Uh, she the said little, no. She said I think. Little see, little girls are getting vicious, and they say that <laughs> they say that the world would be better under control of women. Like, you know, we show you the inventors. Mm -hmm. Maybe she should. She should have uh, called on what's her name, Mary Patrice Davidson. <laughs> Kenner, you know, the sen senator. But anyway, look. That was that manure outside in yeah, the yard yeah, yeah. in the she ground. Said, she said it was the flowers outside. She said, I thought it was you, mommy. The shade, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, this is getting bit. So, look, people. Here's another one. BLM has no interest in helping black people. If you haven't been watching our show, it comes mm -hmm. on five times a week. Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday yeah. through Friday. Hashtag TFR Podcast Live OB. Myself and my sister Tanya. You need to be watching because we break a lot of information down. Yeah. But there is a movement of American black conservatives. Or I don't even know if they're American black. Cause some of them are. are. Some of them could be not American black. right? So we're going to play this and listen to this right here. And then we're going to come right back. So listen to what they say about <gasps> black lives. They have no facts. They don't do any research. They don't learn, do any type of higher learning when it comes to what they believe. All they know is that what the, the media narrative tells them to believe. And that's all they parrot. The organization is fake. That's like, I believe, I personally believe that the BLM movement is fake. Okay, let me pause that right there because I'm looking at dude. And I don't want to say anything. My opinion, he just seemed... 
he just seemed well. Let's get let's just keep playing here. You got this big buff dude, and then this dude comes in and he's talking, and then you look. It has nothing to do with advancing the lives of black people. They actually it, it, say they want to break up the family home. Exactly. They, like their main uh, goal is to break up the patriarchal like nuclear family. They want the men removed out of the family, which is what Democrats want also. Exactly. If, if BLM really cared about black lives, why would it be solely isolated to incidents where a black life is taken at the hands of a white cop. That happens less than 1%. Come on. Now, wait, wait, wait. Now, I like to, like, equate this to, it's the same as if I was in a horrific accident. I have a, a, a massive head wound. I have a leg fracture and a scratch in my finger. And here come the uh, first responders, and they want to tend to the scratch in my exactly. finger. And I'm telling you, exactly. what about the wound on my head? What? Okay, let me pause that right there. Now, oh. you can believe it or not believe it. That's on you. I don't know, but I'm looking at dude, and I'm like, he's talking about the patriarchal family. That's for you to decide. You watch it, go find it, watch it, right? But the thing, who was breaking, what party was breaking up the black family in the 30s and 40s when Malcolm X's family got broke up? Right. When my father's family got broke up, right. broken up. Right. After the father passed, after after the father had died, who was breaking up? What party was breaking up? Right. The people, and you, right. you have to ask these questions to be free. Now, I, I noticed this. I found this, and I said, "Hey, I didn't know that this ever happened on 106 in part." I was shocked at this. I was shocked to see that this had happened. Check this out. Come they spare dance and say Ali. Listen, the Apollo for the amateur. You name yourself after cartoon characters. You a clown, I don't play those games. He's the great white knight, well I'm Damon the Rand. Now I didn't know, I didn't know that that have ever happened on 106 in Park. But then I'm looking at it and I'm saying that it is a Caucasian and a Hispanic and neither one respected what the hip hop culture was about. Which brings us to our next review well, of the night. They didn't respect 106 and Park. That's clearly. right. They did not respect it, right? And which brings us to... The Boys, okay. season two. Right? We have been waiting for season two for... Yes, this is on Amazon. It's a lot of great television to watch, right? Yeah. The first three uh, episodes of season two are up, yeah. right? And so the synopsis is kind of like this. The anti-superhero saga right. continues... Much like season one, where the audience is privy to the malfeasance okay. or just irresponsibility of those with superhero powers, and how that coupled with socio psychopathic behavior leads a crew of men and a woman mm -hmm. to want to eliminate these so called heroes. Okay. This season. The boys introduce the audience. The boys uh, series introduces the audience to Stormfront. She seems just a loose cannon at first, opinionated, having her views, not falling in line, not caring about the hierarchy. Who's the head? This guy is the head of the Super League or whatever. You'll see as you watch it. We're not going to give anything away. You have to watch it. You can watch this season and then go back and watch season one yeah. because season two picks up, lets you know what's happening, and then yeah. it moves forward. Yeah. Well done. And we right? reviewed season one. And we did. We yeah. did. So you can look for that. Yeah. Um, she seems just a loose cannon until she's chasing an Asian couple mm -hmm. who leads her into a project in NYC yeah. where the audience discovers Stormfront is a stone cold yeah. racist she and she uses her powers yep. to eliminate those that she does not care about. Yep. They break into a well, we're not going to tell you too much, but they break into a family's home through the window. Right. 
and a person complains and then the next thing you know the family no longer exists stone cold stone cold races she's got to get her come up and mm -hmm. season we watched the first three episodes yeah. it picks right back up yeah. very entertaining you find out certain nuances about the characters that you did not know before. The superheroes and the boys, to be clear, the boys mm -hmm. are not the superheroes. The boys right. are the crew of men and one woman that want to go out and destroy yeah. these malfeasant, yeah. racist, irresponsible, yeah. socio-psychopathic, yeah superheroes right and so it's kind of like uh like m night Shyamalan's movie about the superheroes where they wiped out where they wanted to wipe out all three they had glass they oh, had yeah, yeah. Split. We, we split and um, and, um bruce. and bruce willis was invincible and they got him at the end who was samuel jackson so it doesn't was, was glass. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. So it's kind of like that. So it's like, what happens? And then they kind of explored that with Batman and Superman. When Superman yeah. had destroyed mm -hmm. a building. And Batman is looking up like, this guy is destroying a building to get the people. But he's destroying infrastructure. <laughs> and I got to kill this guy. And that's he, as a visual ante, went out to kill Superman. And that's how the Justice League came about. But you know what? All that other stuff. I said this uh, when we reviewed season one. Mm -hmm. Like after seeing the first season. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is just like Marvel on steroids. Yeah, like right. this show. And, and, and just to, to go back for a second. Like the, the super, so-called superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. um, that Stormfront, I don't like her. Mm -hmm. She She clearly seems to be... The superhero racist, mm -hmm. like the rest of them had issues, but I think she's the one that's the racist. But but see, it makes you look at you know how people how they show you superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, superheroes would be virtuous mm -hmm. and all that, but they wouldn't be. They're not too virtuous, mm -hmm. and and it shows you the reality that people who are humanoid I'll right. say mm -hmm. not necessarily human mm -hmm. they would have the same pathologies as what they grew up in yeah. and how could you trust people with powers who have problems who have psychological problems and they would have psychological problems okay now people have you seen, seen have you seen have you seen WAP Oh, okay. Have you seen okay. WAP? This is a okay. clip down here. WAP, right? We had to break this in because this kind of like breaks down and you have to go see this. Week, week A police, right? Can we say it? I can, you only say it. No, it's weak ass police, right? So, okay. WAP, uh, WAP, uh, whatever it is. But anyway, okay. check this out right here. In this house, there's some whores in this house, there's some whores in this house, there's some whores in this house. I said certified creeps. 35 deep without that badge and that heat. Man, these police weak. There's some hoes in this house. Yeah, these weak ass police. Always gotta call for backup because they weak ass police. Niggas get shot off in the back because of weak ass police. So I gotta rhyme up on this track about these weak ass police. First of all, rest in peace, Brianna. All them cops need to go to jail when they go to court and they meet your honor. All them cops need enormous bail and when they go to trial and they get convicted, all them cops need to go to hell. Always talking about how I fit descriptions How a cock me, I know it well This one for Sandra Plant, Elijah McClain Three of them had George Floyd smashed to the flow They was trying to crush that little dangly thing That swing in the back of his throat Put Eric Garner in that illegal choke For being on the corner selling single smokes That's why we record them when we see them folks Because we don't be knowing if we gon' get smoked Spot me, follow me, stop me, plot on me Plant drugs in my vehicle, then lie to me Handcuff me, then imprison me privately That's what secretly fuels the economy Talk that shit, you will get split When Cameron call the police on a nigga bitch When they show up I don't even say a thing They already made their mind up before they came So hit the booth and go vote to defund these weak ass police They 
gon' riot till we finally stop these weak ass police. It's time to wop, 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 wop these weak ass police. And I ain't talking about the honest cops, it's weak ass police. <laughs> That was good. Well, that how about good. that, right? That was really good. You know, taking a beat and good. and switching it around. All you have to do yeah. is just search that weak ass police, and it comes right What's up. What's next? And you know, as she goes with her mini me, and her mini me tells her again about that, <laughs> right? So look, you know what? Before so we... I had to so I had to throw that in there real quick before we, we get to... a rating on the boys because oh. that's what this. That's okay. what the boys is really telling you okay. that you can't yeah. trust necessarily, necessarily yeah. trust people who are supposed to be superheroes. Authority. And it's not for children. That's another thing. It we is talk not about for children. Yeah, it's because not for children. there is like extremely bloody. Yeah, but 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 besides that, because you know they they take kids to play movies. It's, well, it's very that. suggestive. It's very yeah. Yeah. You gonna see, when they don't just like you see the head or whatever yeah, body you part see it, coming you see off it you squirting. So it's definitely for it's adults. Gross. Your discretion is advised, right. right? So look, what would you rate the boys? I would give it a ten because like the storyline is great. Um, cause season one was good. We reviewed that. So mm -hmm. I was, I had been waiting the longest for season two. You're right. So then they released it, but then in only three episodes and I was irritated about that, but I was just like, okay, beggars can't be with the chooser. So I'm happy with the three. <laughs> right. So every Friday they'll release, I guess, an episode. Right? right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it yeah, so that's it's a real ten. good. Plus, that's it's diverse, ten. diverse cast. It's a diverse. It's a, no, no, no. It's a multicultural multi, cast. Yeah, multicultural cast. Diverse has cast. to do with yeah. how many people to uh, white officers. That's yeah, so good. it's a diverse cast. All right. And what I like about it, let's say the the I forget the superhero name, but the guy that plays um, in a LeBron James show, uh, I can't even think. Uh, Survivor's Remorse, yeah, right? He plays. He plays a superhero on the boys, and he yeah. does a great job. And then also the other black actor, I can't think of his name now. Yeah, because we weren't really reviewing it. That yeah, because we, we reviewed it before. It. We named all the names. Before. So we I mean, so you know they, that is out. Two really and good, it's ready. two really great black actors are uh, starring in the boys. So, so check it out. I give it a ten, right? Me too. Okay, the next one that we're doing came on Turner Classic Movies, and you know, coming up, I was a Chuck Bear. I, I love Chuck. Berry music, Johnny Be Good, Sweet Little Sixteen, If You Want to Dance With Me, like, you have to be well-rounded in this, right? So, Let the Good Times Roll, 1973, it was released May 25th, day after my birthday, 1973, I was just two years old at the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's a rockumentary, mm -hmm. the 50s live on is the, uh, Hashtag, right? Mm -hmm. Rock and roll lives, right? The 50s lives on, right? Right. Headliners, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Bo Diddley, Chubby Checker, The Coasters, Fats Domino, The Shirelles, Bill Haley and the Comets, The Five Satins, and Danny and the Juniors, right? Right. Now... This, well, let me read on. The documentary puts the spotlight on giants of rhythm and blues. Never forget that they classified it rock and roll mm -hmm. like they classified reality rap, right. gangster rap, but it was actually reality rap. Rhythm and blues, rock and roll. So it puts the spotlight on giants of rhythm and blues, quote, uh, in, quote, in, in uh, parentheses, rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Most in their 40s by this time, still at the top of their musical abilities, even as the 70s saw the change of music from 50s to 70s rock, mm -hmm. soft rock, hard rock, metal came in, Kiss came in, mm -hmm. and these people still held their own, right? Mm -hmm. The performances by the Giants. Now, remember, I separate these groups, because you know, a lot of times they would put, in our opinion, mm -hmm. they would put people in who were not at the level of the American black artists, but the yeah. giants, Fats Domino, the Coasters, 
uh, Chubby Checker, uh, Bo Diddley, Little Richard, and headliner Chuck Berry attend the Shirelles, Bill Haley in the comments, mm -hmm. the Five Satins, and Danny and the Juniors. I give them a seven. The, the Shirelles, they could have been better. They they are an American black group, but they could have been better. It seemed like they were on their way back because they had some downtime. It, it was okay. It wasn't the best. So that's why they get a seven along with the secondary acts. The only problem with the doc, okay. which the original footage should be re-edited mm -hmm. to bring the film up to date, is mm -hmm. the cuts of the constant Caucasians mm -hmm. as if... Rhythm and blues was only their experience. So what do I mean by that? In between, like, while you're looking at what would be classified as just the menstrual, okay. they make, they're reducing these stars down to menstruals. And, in, and on the sides, they're using this technology. The split screen had just come mm -hmm. out. So they're using this technology where they're showing you, while the music is playing, they're showing you Caucasians with their... 50s muscle cars mm -hmm. and they're showing you the women and the white girls with the bobby socks and they're mm -hmm. showing them at the beach they're showing them living a white life mm -hmm. where they were listening to american black music mm -hmm. it should be re-edited to display the american blacks right. the music comes from enjoying the music also right, right? the diverse. photo the photo vignettes mm -hmm. are racist and that is the problem with it. The film vignettes yeah. it are racist, right? Yeah. The performances by the Giants are are are, are nine. Mm -hmm. It would be a ten if the one-sided edits mm -hmm. were balanced. If the if the one-sided edits were balanced. It would be a better presentation altogether, mm -hmm. but they're not balanced, and and it, and it sucks. Mm -hmm. And so, other than that, being able to enjoy it mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. But what would you rate it? Because the music was there. It was entertaining, you know. I would give it a um. I would give it a seven. Yes, yeah, seven. Um, my favorite part, yeah, well, I gave it a seven because um, it wasn't diverse because as we were watching it to you, we noticed it at the same time when you said something, I was like, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing because I'm like watching the, the performers perform and then on the side, like you said, they have these images and I'm like watching the performances and the images and I'm seeing all of these different black performers but I'm not seeing any images of like, black, people black people enjoying it. Right. So I thought right? that was weird. That was that was racist. But my favorite part was I like the scene like with Little Richard. Yeah, yeah. Little <laughs> Richard like was the, taking his clothes off. I like did he had to be what? appreciated. Yeah, oh, he I didn't see that. Throwing stuff out, but Little Richard. But you know the part that I like, what I liked about uh, was the behind the scenes with Little Richard. When he was setting up the stage and he was like being a boss, he was giving orders yeah. to everybody. Um, and you saw him in his real element. His real element, yeah. Not as an entertainer, but the man as a as a businessman. As a businessman. As a businessman. And, and he kind of came out of that light voice. That yeah, he, he had played. a deep voice. He came out and said, "This needs." He was telling the white boy who he was, was shooting the, orders head out. The, yeah. the head of the stage. He's like, "This." needs to be and then he went back into his voice kind of like they said michael jackson actually had a deep voice mm -hmm. but he was uh faking okay okay well let me go back real quick okay so on the boys right so jesse usher right from survivor's remorse he plays the superhero a train okay and um and lines alonzo we know him from being on multiple shows right but what i learned just now was you know the superhero that's in all black that doesn't speak? Uh -huh, black that? Noir uh -huh. is played by Nathan Mitchell. Oh, okay. He's Another black, black artist. He, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, people. So on Hulu, there's a show called Nashville. Yes. It aired originally in 2012 yeah. through 2018. Yeah. ABC, first four seasons. 
CMT Country Music uh, Television okay. last two seasons, right? Okay. Was a big economic boom for Nashville 10. Mm -hmm. Artists released music, mm -hmm. kind of like the Partridge fa family did back in the late 60s, early 70s, right? Mm -hmm. uh, precursor to Empire, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Focused on the lives of two country artists, mm -hmm. one in her 40s okay. and one in her 20s, just okay. beginning, and the competition between the two, right? Right. As it develops over seasons, it introduces to the audience daughters, two daughters, mm -hmm. love interests, mm -hmm. gay characters, mm -hmm. and how the music is made, mm -hmm. how the industry works mm -hmm. in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, how the music industry works, period, right? So it has six seasons all together. We're been, we've been binge watching it, yeah. and it's about... Five, we're about coming up on the, uh, coming to the end of the fourth, going into the fifth season. Mm -hmm. It's it's really good television, right? So Was that would you say diverse cast? Yeah, well, it's a it's you not a diverse cast. <laughs> it is a multicultural cast because you do okay. see black people okay. in this piece. They are enjoying the music. They're there. Right. You know, every time I see a black person in something that's predominantly white, mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh man, that makes me want to follow that character. As soon as I see, oh, well, who was that who cut across the screen? Let's follow where that person is going. Right. Storyline through line of Nashville 10. Character development and arc of the characters 10. Okay. Tear jerking scenes in it yep. 10. Seven the musical numbers, all of them aren't good, mm -hmm. but they're. they're Come once you get into like the second season and on, mm -hmm. they start that you can see where there's the influence of hip hop, right? Okay. In the music, in in the rhythms, right? Okay. Uh, the actors' emotion, the acting ten, mm -hmm. special guest stars. That's a ten. Mm -hmm. Teaching behind the scenes of the music business in ten. Nashville is in ten. So, what would you rate Nashville and why? Across the board, I would give it a 10. Um, I remember when, um, so like you said, it's a precursor to Empire. So Empire came out mm -hmm. and Empire did huge numbers, right? So then different uh, networks said, hey, let's jump on that bandwagon or whatever. But you know what? ABC jumped on the bandwagon because they saw the success. They of, saw it first. They saw the success of Empire. No, Empire yeah. came out after. Did it? Kim, it? That's why I said it came out it after. Pre it was a precursor, oh, meaning it was oh, before. Oh. It came out 2012 to 2018. Empire started in 2015. Wow. So it's a precursor to to uh, to you Empire. You did say precursor. You know what? I don't. Well, they got it right though, because other channels. Um, no, they I, tried I, to. Yeah, well, yeah, Nashville is research. A, yeah, yeah, Nashville, Nashville came really first. Good. It came yeah. in 2012. Okay. And, and then, then Empire so that's came, probably why right? they gave because the green light. at the time in 2012, that's when Hustle and Flow was out, okay. right? Okay. And then afterwards, they got back together because remember, they tried to mm -hmm. stop. But anyway, that's another story for another time. Well, but anyway, anyway, what I was so getting to show is... a 10? Well, no. Nashville, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so now that you cleared that up, because I remember when Empire came out, so many other shows... But now knowing that M Nashville was first, yes. I mean, I, Nashville's a great show. Great show. I mean, because it's like the writing. Mm -hmm. What I like, okay, so in Nashville, so Nashville has heterosexual as well as homosexual relationships mm -hmm. on the show, right? But so it's not just base, so it's not just the American blacks that are being hit with that, and I'm sure the yeah, country so, people who yeah. are. Totally, they they're really but what totally I, against it. Yeah, but what I you liked what? about it, what I liked about it, was that even you know they had heterosexual relationships, homosexual relationships, but what drove the show was uh, storylines about just overall life music. and relationships and music. It wasn't and, and, right, so they didn't just push like uh, anyone's sexuality. It was about each individual character and what they were going through, right? right? 
and then so the writing is so good like they the scenes where like they're like breaking down crying you find yourself your eyes getting watered because like i said like we said it was multicultural right so they have um uh 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 season one right so uh, one of the family members that they grew up with was a black uh councilman right and then his wife and then he was involved in the storyline right and then um then the following season one of the uh main characters her best friend is black uh -huh. so what i love is um in the season we're watching now four mm -hmm. one of the uh co corporate people um she's um like black but then there's other black people yeah, there's within other. the but what mario I like, van peoples actually directs directed a, few episodes a lot and of makes episodes. a guest right. appearance so that's what i like about it right yeah. it's so, so what would you give it behind the scenes as well as in front of the scenes you do see it's multicultural i would give it a 10 because the music is great mm -hmm. the costume and design is just great mm -hmm. i love seeing the performances the storylines are good mm -hmm. and it just real good because it wasn't it's not it's not what i thought like the previews that they gave when nashville was out didn't do it justice at all okay so i'd give it a 10 yeah as well all right people so a couple of review a couple of trailers before we get won't be able to play the whole thing mm -hmm. but we're gonna play a couple of scenes from the trailers this one is called the Ratchet Nurse right. coming on, uh, coming out. Halloween is happening, right? Yeah. So this is what's happening. Excuse me, you're eating my peach. I don't see your name on it. And who would do that? Do what? Put their name on a peach. Somebody who really wanted it. No one has ever put their name on a peach. I've seen it done. No, you haven't. What are you gonna do about it? What are you, deaf? No. Just thinking of all the things I'm going to do about it. All right, so people, we are mm -hmm. waiting for that to come yeah. out, right? Yeah. That comes out uh, September 18th, I be yeah. believe, yeah. right? So this one right here is Batman, the Batman, right? Wow. Right now it's on a hiatus right now because mm -hmm. of the fact that the main lead yeah. character Robert has that has caught COVID. Right. Right? And and I'm wondering cuz you know COVID affects the lungs and we hope that he will be able to pull through and still mm -hmm. do the performance that he do. But this scene right here mm -hmm. encapsulates the dark night and this film is going to be kind of like the Joker, not the Joker, right. but Joker, and it's very brutal. The hell are you supposed to be? I'm vengeance. I'm vengeance, but yes. you see how he sold that. The actor, you know, because you know, acting is two sides. Mm -hmm. So as he Threw the punch that put him down. He really sold it, and the actor sold it as he went down. And then he just continued to do it. He said he's vengeance. I said, "Oh my!" That made me sit forward in the film because you know I'm I don't. Forward to seeing. I don't really too much sit forward in films, right? Right. And so people. That's what we're gonna have to leave it. We ran out of time. This has yeah. been a robust episode of the film review movies music culture politics society we are your host i'm crazy day tracy and we review movies music culture politics and society yes. and we will see you next time on the film review the film review movies music culture politics society podcast interviews movie reviews and more Live Sundays at 5.30 p.m. on the Film Review Live channel. Subscribe. Hi, this is Bernadette Stannis, Thelma from Good Times, and you're watching the Film Review.